wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. Ye shall know them by their fruits. The men gather grapes from thorns or figs from thistles. Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit, neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. Wherefore, by the fruit ye shall know them. Not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many shall come to me in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work for iniquity. My text tonight is disarmed, disclaimed. Denied ownership of, disowned, cast into the potter's field. Father, take these words and bless them tonight. In the name that's above every name, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. You may be seated. Everywhere I go, I see the reject. Oh, people who had once known the Lord, but now they're crushed, lying in the potter's field. It's a sad story. I hear the cry in the midnight hour. I cannot go another day. I cannot stand to live to face tomorrow. Once they had known the power of the Lord, there's a great harvest in the earth gleaning those who will hear the call. There's also the potter's field where the rejects are being thrown daily. I want you to notice tonight, it said, Enter in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and many there be which go therein. Many. Because it's a wide way. It's a road that all the crowd can travel without any problem. At all. Then he said here, the reason they travel this broad way is because straight is the gate and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. I want you to notice it said, narrow is the way. When you preach it like it is and lay it down. People think you're a little narrow, and you're not lay, you're not making it broad enough, you know, for everybody. When you get it too wide, then it goes to the pit instead of the glory land. There is one Lord, there is one faith, there is one baptism. I don't care what the multitude say. 
I don't care if the crowds are following them. I don't care if they got a million in their crowd. There's one Lord, and there's one faith, and there's one baptism, and that's all there is. There is none other. There's only one way. You say, that's narrow. That's what Jesus said. Narrow is the way. And few there be that'll pay the price, that'll lay it on the line, and say, live and die, sink or swim. I'll take God's way. So it said, beware of false prophets, teachers, religious leaders that will come to you in sheep clothing, but inwardly they are raving wolves. They come to you with great enticing words and persuasive words that surely God that created all things loves all people and that nobody will really be lost in the end. And one feller has gone so far that not even the angels that fell will be lost. And everybody will finally be saved. In the end, somewhere, someplace. Now, that's getting it really wide when you say the devil and his angels are going to finally make it. My Bible said that God created hell for the devil and his angels. And hell has enlarged her jaws to receive the multitude that's coming. And that's what the Bible said. But the narrow mind. Professors of today, they open the door and make it wide. And everybody that wants to can walk. And listen what he said. Yes, you shall know them by their fruit. Do men gather grapes of thorns, of figs, of thistles? Even so ever good tree that bringeth forth good fruit. But a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. They will profess one thing and do another thing. They got one face for the church house and another one for the back alley. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. And here's what he said, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit is hewn down and cast into the fire. The greatest prophet, according to Jesus Christ, lost his head because he said the axe is laid at the root of the tree. And you hypocrites are going to be hewn down. You're going to be cast into the fire. He said, oh, you generation of vipers, who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? And so, every tree that bringeth forth not good fruit, and it said every tree, every tree, and that person, every person that bringeth forth not good fruit, will be hewn down and cast into the lake of fire and brimstone forever and forever. Not ever one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven The best time to test your conviction is when you're thinking about crossing over. The long shadows are lengthening out, and the deaf angel is drawing nigh. And the doctor says, well, don't think he's going to make it. I want to ask you then, what about your conviction? What kind do you want then? What kind do you want to hang on to then? Are you still wanting to be liberal? 
Are you still wanting to keep the door wide open forever, Tom, Dick, and Harry? Are you still ready to let the standards down when the sun of time is setting? Test yourself. Do you want to die with what you live by today? Well, you're going to have to die. You're going to have to die the way you live. As the three falls, so shall it be. There'll be no uh, salvation after death. When death comes at the end, it'll be no more. And then the Bible said the born again, the born again only will be in the first resurrection. And those who are not born again will creep on until the second resurrection, which has no power, when they'll be cast in the outer darkness. Do you want the real resurrection power within? There's only one. The baptism of the Holy Ghost is the resurrection power, the only power that will get you out of the grave on the first resurrection morning. Then, if you knew, you would have to stand before a just God tonight, before midnight. Would you now get rid of some of the things you're doing? Would you now lay aside some little sins that so easily is besetting you? Would you continue to tear down standards and throw them aside, knowing that you'll be judged by every deed and every word and every action and every thought tonight before midnight? Weigh it out tonight. That's the way you do it. Now, these people that we read about tonight went a long way in religion. They made an open profession. They stood in the synagogues and they said, Lord, Lord, or Master, Master. But they did not do the things that he said do. You can say, Lord, 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 and yet not live like the Lord. A lot of people would say, Lord, 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 on Sunday and live like the devil, the devil, the devil on Monday. That kind of religion don't even get off the ground, much less in the glory land. They made an open profession. They said, Lord, Lord, have not we done all these things? And they understood Christian service. They knew how to build churches, how to pray for sick folks, how to knock on doors and do all of these things. Sort of a high-class religious crowd. They had obtained remarkable success, been mighty successful, they thought. Hadn't we done all these great things, built all these great things, all these things? Have you noticed it, Lord? Uh, they were noted for their practical energy of working and building and doing things. They were really orthodox. They, when it come to some doctors, they were straight as a gun barrel. But on others, they were crooked as a barrel of snakes. You see, everybody's got to have some doctrines right in order to fool the public. But you know, the apostles had it all. They said, we are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. We are not built upon the foundation of the Methodists, the Baptists, the Pentecostals, or any other denomination. We are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. And that means what they prophesied, we believe and obey. What Jesus taught, we teach and believe. And what the chief apostles shouted to 3,000 souls that were saved when they asked, what must we do? Here's the truth. Here's the man that God gave the keys to and told him that he had opened the doors of heaven and he would bind on earth and heaven would bind it. When they asked him the question, the first question, he didn't stagger, he didn't stutter, and it sounds narrow to a lot of people today, 
And they say, times have changed. But my dear friend, God hasn't changed. And God's word has not changed. The apostle Peter answered him back and said, repent. Now, Jesus said, repent of perish. He once winked at ignorance, but now he commands all men everywhere to repent. But we got a lot of folks who'll jump repentance today and say, just believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. You don't have to do anything. You are just as far from the kingdom of God as you was when you started. When you say, I believe on Jesus Christ and I'm saved without confessing your sins, repenting of your sins, turning you back on the world, you're still a sinner till you repent. Now, it's an error. Right, it's too narrow for some group. They want to go the big road. They'd rather shout and jump and holler and go to hell than to get in the straight and narrow and go to heaven. They want to make a great big impression, a big hooray. But my friend, the doctrine is still in the book. Repent and be baptized. Not just the tramp on the street and the farmer. But when he laid it down, he said, repent and be baptized, every one of you, you doctors and lawyers, the high priest and the fellow on the street and the banker, everybody get baptized in Jesus' name. I don't know what they got against Jesus. They claim to love him so much, and yet they won't get baptized in his lovely, sweet, wonderful name. And the Bible says over and over and over dozens of times of salvation in no other name. There's remission of sin in no other name. There's no other name that'll cast out devils. You don't cast out devils in the name of the Father. You don't cast out devils in the name of the Son. They'd laugh at you. You've got to say in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, get out. All right. And you shall. He said, everyone. Then he said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, not just a few of you. But if you repent and get baptized in Jesus' name, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you and to your children and limits to far off for the Gentiles as many as the Lord our God shall call. Is he still calling people? Then he calls them into one experience. Repentance, water baptism, the infilling of the Holy Ghost. He has not changed. If he calls you at all, he'll call you to obey the gospel. When the angel came from heaven... He did not send him over to wishy-washy Sam Jones to tell him how to be saved. He didn't send him over to some fellow that says any old way you'll do. You go to your church and I'll go to mine. When the angel told him where to go, he told him to go to the man with the keys. And he'll tell you how to be saved. And Peter told him how to be saved, and he got the Holy Ghost and spake with tongues and was baptized in Jesus' name. Well, the angel didn't send him off somewhere else, and neither does God send him somewhere else. He sends you to the man that's got the key. And if you want to know how to be saved, open your Bible and look at what the first preacher preached on the day of Pentecost, and... The one that Jesus said, I gave him the key. That's Nair. That's Nair. That's the way it is. That's the way it is. If you'll find anywhere in the New Testament where God ever sent any man out to preach the gospel, didn't preach Acts 2.38, I'll never preach another sermon. Every man that was called to preach from the day of Pentecost on preached Acts 2.38. 
Paul said he hadn't met any disciples. He didn't meet them for 15 years. But the Lord spoke out of heaven, and he went to the Arabian Desert, and he came back knowing all the doctrine that the apostles preached. Because the Lord don't give two different gospels. One to Peter and one to Paul, and another one to Philip. They all preach the same identical thing. All right. They mentioned Christ's name three times. Haven't we done all these great works in thy name? In thy name? And they kept it up for a long time. I don't know how long they lived for God, lived like that. Suppose they lived for God, going to church every Sunday, fasting a couple of days a week, paying their tithes and building Sunday school rooms, and big organizations and great big uh, clouds coming from everywhere. Oh, there, this is it. This is it. But it wouldn't. You don't save people just because they say, Lord, Lord, and profess. That's the reason. There's another reason. He saves them because they repent and are baptized and are filled with the Holy Ghost. They expected to enter the kingdom, but they clung to false hopes to the last. They dared to say, Lord, Lord, to Christ himself and use his name. But they wouldn't write. There was something wrong with this child. Now, they were fatally mistaken. They prophesied. They preached. They taught the Bible. But their hearts wasn't right. They supposedly cast out devils. Jesus didn't say they did or didn't. They said they cast them out. But the devil was not cast out of them because they were workers of iniquity. They, 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 they look for the sensationalist preachers, no doubt, and the singers, but was very careful about essentials to salvation. Really, you can just about believe anything you want to believe, you know, just so you're honest. That never got anybody to heaven. There's a lot of folks honest that believe that, uh, Buddha, God, some of the rest of them. They found it out in a terrible way. Now let's see. Not everyone, Jesus said, saith that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. It's not everyone that's shouting Lord, Lord from the pulpit. It's not everyone that's singing gospel songs about the Lord that's going to be saved. It's not everyone that builds a church and names it after the Lord that he will bless. He said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. The will of the Father is expressed from Genesis to Revelation. And you can't be saved unless you do his will. You can't do your will and get by. You've got to do his will. You can't have your way. You've got to let him have his way. You see, the hardest thing God has to do when he saves a man is to get the world out of him, get the starch out of him, get the stubbornness out of him, Get him to surrender to the leading of the Holy Spirit. That's hard sometimes for him to get that all out. But he'll keep heating that on, putting it on that wrinkle. Amen. If you'll stay on the ironing board, he'll run you through his washing machine. He'll run his iron over you. Because he's coming after a church without spot or without wrinkle. He's a wrinkle remover. He's a spot remover. 
And he has what it takes to remove his pride. But these poor people didn't get it removed. Now, many shall say unto me in that day, many, many, everybody say many. Oh, yeah. As many, 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 millions of people think they got it made. And be a million miles from the kingdom of God. Some of them further from God after they get in their church than they was before. Or they leave out the essential. They said, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? You know we preached all over the world and sent missionaries all over the world, and we preached and taught this Bible and about thy name. Lord, Lord, have not we prophesied in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils. And in thy name done many wonderful works. They thought all they had done was wonderful. Brother, they were sold on their denomination. It was made up of doctors and lawyers and judges and intellectuals. Oh, they were proud of their wonderful, wonderful setup. Doubtful they have took any of the apostles in their church. But we're too common. Fishermen. They were looking for the high class. Oh, they said, we got a lot of money and good things, you know, all of that. And we prophesied in thy name. We've cast out devils in thy name. And we've done many wonderful works in thy name. And here's what the Lord said. You know, it's another story when you stand before him. It's so different, you know, to get the great approval of the superintendents and the general superintendents and the presidency. And all of these fellows, you know, with great to pat you on the back, take you down to the graveyard when you die, put flowers all over you and put a long piece in the paper, and all the great, wonderful things that they can think up to say about it. But while he was preaching, the poor fellow was in hell, praying that his brothers wouldn't come down there. See, so when you stand before God, he's the one that decides on whether or not you got it. You don't need to call your doctor of divinity. He probably doesn't got the chains tied on around him and pitched over. Ain't no need to call any of those fellows because God don't need anybody's help. He's the judge of all the earth. He's the savior now. But he'll be the judge then. And he's going to lay it on the line. And he said, Then will I profess unto them. You see, they've been professing, but not the right way. But he's going to profess unto them. And it's going to blow their mind. It's going to turn them every way but loose. When he says, I never knew you. I never knew you, preachers. I never knew you, church members. You're not on my book. You joined some church. But you didn't get born in the mind. Because I don't write your name down until you're born. It prophesied that this man will be born here and this one there when he writes up his book. He knows when a man gets born again and he picks up the pen and he writes his name. These fellows that hollered, Lord, Lord, for 40 years. 
John said, I don't even know you. I never knew you. I didn't mean he didn't know him as sinners, but I never knew you. The way you say it, as Christians, I never knew you. You never registered on my billboard. Now, your sincerity and repentance never flashed one time on my board in heaven. I really never knew you fellas. I don't remember any of all this you're talking about. He said, I never knew you. Disowned, rejected, never admitted no one else. I never knew you. Now, he says, depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That didn't seem to make our toot and peep. But that commercial, they had made me a soul of holy water. other things. They sold me. They made money. Just picking their own pockets. And he said, I never knew you fellas. You are the same crowd that I found in the temple buying and selling when I came in with a whip and I ran you out. Turn over your tables. Depart from me, ye workers of iniquity. For I never knew you. I never knew you. Therefore, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rains descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat upon that house and it fell not it fell not for it was founded upon a rock the world came with all of its glamour and glory and Hung it out, hung it out before. But he didn't follow that. The winds came. And the rain, and it blew, and it beat upon it. Oh, the world beats on you every day. On the job, they're beating on you. They're beating on you. The winds, they blow. And the curses are released on the people. And they hammer on you. And they talk about you. And they run you down. But the real true blue is still there living for God when the sun goes down. And they curse and blaspheme and blue until their brains have almost blown, been blown out. The old saints kill there. Like the rock is a barter. You can't move me. I know the real gospel. Is repentance, baptism in Jesus' name, being filling with the Holy Ghost. I've got power when the wind blows. I've got power when the floods come. I've got power when they curse and lie. But it said it was founded upon rock. Peter said, I'll build my church. Upon this rock, he talking about himself, his gospel, his proof, and the gates of hell shall never be able to remove one tiny tittle of this truth. After he raves and roars against that old soul for 50 years, She's still standing there. Still there. Old 
and worn and wrinkled. But still, he stands there looking like a Christian, acting like a Christian, going to church like a Christian, lifting up the standard like a Christian, after they've been hammered by every doctrine and every false doctrine that rolled through the country. She's still there. She's still there. She still looks like a Christian. She still prays like one. She still talks like one. There's old brother. A lot of water's going on the bridge. A lot of battles. Members of the family's died. The enemy's come. Battle against him. Day in, day out. They covet him with untruth. A little here won't hurt, a little there won't hurt. And he said, I'll never give up. One fiddle. I'll never yield. They're the ones that still walk in the straight and narrow path. The others that decided to compromise during my 47 years of the ministry, they're not around no more. They're out in the bars. Some of them in the graveyard. In hell. They fell by the wayside. They didn't listen to the true blue. Old-fashioned gospel. Great as a gun barrel. As sure as God. They deviated. A little bit. Took them a year. Some of them two. Some of them five. Some of them ten. But they're not here anymore. You remember when they came up with that little thing that disagreed with the church on? Remember? It sounds so little. But you see, they're doing all of it now. All of it. Here's another fellow. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not, these sayings of mine, the Bible, the truth, if you leave one of them off, one saying, one saying, one saying, I guarantee you, the winds and the floods will get you. The devil don't need but one shingle off. He don't need but one brick out. He don't need but one window pane out. That's all. One little hole. You don't have to be in the bottom of your boat. Twelve inches in diameter. The foot one day no bigger than match them. After a while, it'll sink the boat. It'll just take longer. But it will sink if you don't stop it. Here he is. He shall be likened to a foolish man which build his house upon the sand. Now the sand is tradition of men. Men's ideas. Somebody said, oh, but he's a doctor of divinity. Nothing that men said will stand. Only these words will stand when the world's on fire. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will never pass away. Never. And the rain descended and the floods came. And I know some people, the floods don't have to come. They done got so many shingles off. The rain takes care of it. And the wind blew. They've got so many window panes out, lowering the standard until the wind and the rain blows through the roof and the windows. And the foundation is on the sand. And 
the Bible said, and it beat upon the house and it fell. Now the other said it fell not. Here's the difference. One, it fell not. The other, it fell. Which one do you want to be? The one that falls not or the one that will fall when the test comes? your weakness, the devil knows how. If the opposite sex is your weakness, he knows how. It takes up one that has just the color eyes and just the color hair and what? Just the way you like to see him walk. And he'll find her and she'll fall head over heels in love with him and say, I never knew love till I saw you. What in the world's wrong with me? Full of devils as a dog is free. But the devil knows how. You see, he reads your mind and he knows what you think about and what you fall for. And he sends it down. He's a shrewd operator and don't think you can ever out argue him and out figure him, compromise him with him. There's not but one thing you do to that old boy is to get out now. Not tomorrow. You won't spend the night here. Oh, he said it won't hurt just one. Let me come in just for one hour. You may never get him out. You better keep him out while you got him out. Anyway, it fell. And three, for the fall of it, this family fell and broke into a thousand pieces and was scattered to the four winds and the children scattered. It fell because the wind blew. Here comes the sheep, a wolf in sheep's clothing. He has such a sweet voice. He's very, very intelligent. And he reads the Bible, he says, from Genesis to Revelation. But when he gets a hold of it, he'll twist it until it would look like a barrel of augers, if he could. This don't matter, and this don't mean what it says, and this don't mean what it says. To leave this out, and it won't hurt to add this. The Bible's all that it takes to cure that old wolf. He said, if you add to, the plagues are going to be added to you that's written in the book. And that's hell, fire, and brimstone, one of them, the last. And if you take anything out, your part will be took out of the Lamb Book of Life. So don't take it out. Don't take holiness out. Don't take standards out. Don't take tongues out. If you do out, wink your soul. And it came to pass. Jesus said, then we say, and the people were astounded at his doctrine because it was so straight and so narrow. It had so much authority. And he shook them. Oh, this on. After practicing the religion for many years, Jesus said, except your religion exceed that of the Pharisees, you will in no wise enter the kingdom of God. They believed in God, and they believed in one God. They believed in living a good, clean life. And they believed in fasting and praying, paying their tithe. But they didn't believe in letting the Lord in their hearts to rule their life. Now I can see Cain, and he watches Abel go out to get a little lamb and build all the must have went through a lot more trouble than 
Abel. All Abel had to do was to go out and grab a little lamb, tie it on the altar, cut his throat. pumpkin patch, and he had to go to the garden and get some turnip greens and tomatoes and all the other things, and down in the orchard to get the peaches and pomegranates and all that. He gathered it all up, and he brought it all in. Pretty, beautiful. There was Abel, little old bloody lamb over there. Farmer's delight. Very beautiful. Peanuts and popcorn. Anything you want, he's got it piled up here. All right, Todd. I didn't have to kill anybody, anything. This is the fruit of the field. You earth grew it. You sent rain to water it. Therefore, here I offer it to you. Sacrifice, pen the pie, but there wasn't no fry. And he got angry. The Lord said, When you do well, Cain, you'll be received. But you hadn't been doing well, boy. God had one plan for the fire to fall, and that was blood. He followed the bloodline all the way from Genesis. Come through the book of Revelation. Anybody gets off the bloodline is hell bound. But that was the first false religion set up. Very beautiful. Looks a lot better. I'll tell you what, it looks a lot better to say now as they will pray. Some old song now. Near my God to thee. And now we open the doors of the church. And anyone who would like to profess to walk down here and shake my hand and accept Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. No altar. No repentance. They shake hands, no emotions, there's not a tear. Nobody trembles. And they say, now, will you vote to receive him into the church? Well, if he got born again, he's already in. You don't have to vote to receive somebody into God's church. He's the one who votes on it. Now, that looks good, and it's beautiful. To the intellectuals, they like that. But when the old preacher gets over the pulpit and preaches hell, par, and brimstone, repent or perish, and that old sinner's hanging on to the back of the pew, his hands are trembling, tears coming down his face, and finally he staggers down the aisle, and finally uh, he crawls down like Brother King did one night here, and he falls on his face, crying out to God, crying out to God. Everything's out of order. No, it's not. It's in order. That's Holy Ghost order. Amen. Weeping. And all of a sudden, the glory of God begins to shine. And they begin to shake and tremble under the power of the Holy Ghost. And the tongue begins to stammer. The lips begin to stammer. Everything's all out of counter as far as the world's concerned. But suddenly, they begin to speak in another language. That's Holy Ghost disturbance. And they don't want him in their church because they don't like it. They want it cut and dried and controlled. But honey, when the Holy Ghost moves in, ain't nobody got control. 
he came to seek and to save that which is lost and to guide us into all truth. Lead us and guide us. Here comes one on this side full of devils. Why, he'd been sitting in that old church for years and he never got that kind of fix because he had never met the name of Jesus Christ for the blood was preached. And suddenly he's screaming. He's falling down in the floor. He's twisting around like a snake because he's got a snake in him, the old devil. He said, my God, everything's gone haywire in that Pentecostal church. And suddenly the preacher lays hands on him and said, come out, you devil. And all of a sudden, the man lifts his hand and thanks the Lord for complete deliverance. They don't want that. Say we don't have none of that screaming rolling around in our church. We don't have enough of power of God to stir up the devil. The devil can sleep in the balcony. He can sleep on the front pew. If he wants a good nap and don't have to be worried, let him go to one of those churches don't preach Acts 2.38 and he can sleep. A lot quieter there than it is down the honky tonk. him a little nap. But I want you to know one thing. If someone had jumped and hollered Jesus, I want the Holy Ghost for the other speaking in other tongues, he'd wake up. So with that preacher in the deacon to lead him out and say, you must be sick. You need to see a psychiatrist. Brother Welch is debating speaking in tongues. He had been preaching it. And he just quit debating and hauled on and preached the Holy Ghost. And all of a sudden, one of the fellow's members threw up her hands and began to scream. And God filled her with the Holy Ghost right there in the debate. And they was running back there to stop it and to, and, and to pan her and to lead her out. And Brother Wells said, let her alone. Said, she's got what you said she couldn't get. I don't care where you're at. If you meet God's condition, you can get it. Well, let's sing that old song here. Y'all get together, take the whole world to give me Jesus. Praise the Lord. Anybody that wants to pray, you can. We start the revival next Sunday night. And I just wanted to preach to you tonight. I will lay it down like it is. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one Bible, one truth. That's all. Just stand and sing it. Take the whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. I won't turn back, I won't turn back. Oh, take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. Take this whole world, but give me Jesus. I won't turn back.